Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is a short tutorial on how to make lucid cord. You might have seen me make this type of cord from her Regency short stays. I'll link that video down below. I've been making lucid cord for a few months, not for any particular project, but just as a means of keeping my hands busy if I am too tired or can't sew. But first, a quick overview of the history. Lucids are thought to date back to Viking and medieval times. There are some rare surviving examples of the cord itself, and also some examples of objects that could have been used as lucids. Again, there is little evidence of the braid itself, but it is widely stipulated that lucid cord was used in these times periods. It seemed it might have declined in fashion in the 12th century to be revived again in the 17th century and then fall out of fashion in the early 19th century. Lucid is the name of the tool itself, an object with two prongs. The lucid has also been called a lutel, chain fork or a lyre. The lucid, unlike finger loop braiding or kumihimo cord, produces a strong square shaped cord used throughout the centuries to tie a variety of items. The cord itself is created through interlocking loops and is quite springy. It can also be made from all kinds of yarn and unlike the other types I've mentioned, doesn't need to be pre-cut into a length, so it can produce very long cords. However, because the cord is looped, it will unravel if cut in the middle. Now for the tutorial itself. To make lucid cord, all you need is a lucid, and some yarn. They come in different sizes and styles, but all have two prongs. Mine was bought at my local craft store for about five pounds, but it is quite big and chunky, and I'd like to swap it out for a smaller one. Now you won't need to cut a length of yarn, so you can keep using it from the spool. I recommend you start with a wool yarn, as it has a bit more stretch to it and will be easier to learn the move. The linen and cotton yarn I used for my Regency short stays was very, very high maintenance. <laughs> but makes a strong cord. The cord can also be bigger or smaller, depending on the size and type of yarn and how tightly you weave it. Your first step is to pull the yarn through the hole in the middle of the lucid. I am right-handed, so I use my left hand to hold the lucid and I also hold the yarn in place. The position here is important. You should be holding your yarn over the lucid and then it goes under the lucid through the hole, up through the back. With the yarn in place at the back of the lucid, you pull the yarn over the first prong and then under over the second prong under and then hold taut over the first prong you then pull the first loop you made over it you hold the yarn you then rotate the lucid to the left and i usually give the yarn a little tug towards the left again just to center the loop you then pull you always pull the under loop over the strand, the free strand of yarn, and then rotate left. It's a lot easier to see than to explain. <laughs> Something that can happen when you put the lucid away and come back to it later is that the yarn will have shifted and it will be on the wrong side, so not the side that you should be twisting. This is sometimes tricky to fix, but uh, what I usually do is I look to the loose from the top so that you can see where the loops are forming and you can usually trace the thread to where it should be going. The other thing I do is that I sometimes put the loose away with an elastic band over the loops so that they stay in place. And then it's just this motion again and again. You pull the under loop over the free strand of yarn Rotate left, tighten, repeat. Eventually, you will have enough of the cord forming for it to feed through the hole in the middle of the lucid. When working with the tougher yarn like the linen, I found it really helpful to wear my thimble because of the way w where the cord presses against your finger when you rotate it and tighten it. There, I just use it to help tighten it. The more you tighten the cord, the smaller it will be. It is also important to try and keep the same tightness on the loops so that they don't vary in size. Something that I forgot to show you is how to finish the cord. First, you will need to carefully remove the two loop from the prongs and then cut the yarn give a few inches so you can work with it. Then you need to pull the cut end of the yarn through the two loops and tighten them. This can be a little tricky, but it will secure it. If you manage to lose the loops, you can unravel a little bit of the end of the cord and try to feed cut length of the yarn through those two loops as you unravel it. Just remember that it will unravel if you don't secure the end. And 
And that is it. I hope this is helpful for someone, a new one. Thank you so much for watching.